Dear organizers, first of all, I would like to thank you very much for this uh, kind invitation to participate in this uh, wonderful workshop in this wonderful location. Unfortunately, I cannot uh, join in person. My talk today is about MRAM adoption in microelectronics, status and perspectives. And this is um, done uh, in collaboration with my colleagues in the MRAM team in Spintech, Kevin, Ricardo, Guillaume and Bernard. So uh, my talk is um, organized uh, as follows. I will start first by uh, an introduction from magnetic media recording to embedded memories. I will give an overview of the STT MRAM status in microelectronics industry. I will describe new memory concepts developed at Spintech beyond STT MRAM, and I will give some perspectives for Internet of Things and computing. So uh, let me uh, start with uh, the added value of the magnetic recording at, and its first industrial application. For more than 50 years, uh, the r and magnetism has been largely stimulated by the development of the magnetic recording technology. So the evolution of the aerial density uh, due to the uh, different developments going from uh, inductive heads, MR heads, GMR, uh, TMR. Uh, actually, uh, this progress uh, was important uh, and it brought um, several advantages in terms of developments of the spintronics. So, for example, it was possible to propose solutions in the memory hierarchy, namely for the uh, bottom part of this memory hierarchy, which is uh, by the, uh, um, in fact, um, the dependence as a function of the speed. Uh, so the slowest memories are on the bottom, the quickest are on the top, and as a function of the density, the denser being on the bottom. Solutions in terms of local storage and cloud storage with high densities were possible due to this uh, progress. Uh, while, uh, of course, new solutions have to be added uh, to the fast memories. Right now, the progress in aerial density is slowing down due to the physical limits and the lack uh, of cost-effective solutions due to the fact that pattern media are too expensive. And right now, there is a progressive replacement by flash hard drives and solid-state uh, memories. Uh, right now, the challenges for the logic circuits are namely related to the power consumption. So if we are looking to the compute uh, energy in nanojoule per year, we can see that there is a, uh, an important increase, which is approaching the overall world energy production. And if no uh, low power solution will be uh, found, uh, there is a possibility that this increase of the energy reaches the overall world energy production. So solutions have to be found. Now, if we look also as a function of how this power consumption is um, uh, shared, we can see that uh, there is a continuous increase. Uh, the bigger part, namely the green and the yellow part here is coming from the logic part, uh, close to the processor, uh, and uh, a smaller fraction is coming from the uh, switching power and the leakage power in the memory part. So the logic is the major issue. So where the logic is located is the part which is above the main memory, namely in the cache and in the register. So uh, in what we call the embedded area. So for that, uh, we really need uh, non-volatile solutions. There are not uh, uh, non-volatile solutions in this area. So Spintronics uh, can bring uh, some advantages in, in this part. And uh, also we can have non-volatile solutions only for memories that are fast enough in order to um, replace either the cache or to approach uh, to the register part. So uh, this um, brings what we call the second major industrial application of the Spintronics, which is uh, the MRAM, uh, which is non-volatile. Um, and uh, is CMOS voltage and back end of line compatible? Is it fast in the nanosecond time scale? 
potentially scalable and dense and with large uh, endurance. I will not enter into detail about the uh, main uh, uh, block of the uh, MRAM memory, which is the magnetic tunnel junction, of course, with uh, the retention part uh, and its uh, properties as a function of uh, right current, uh, error probability or stability of the tunnel magnetic resistance with the cycling. So uh, this indicates that uh, MRAM uh, allows increasing the cache uh, size, which uh, potentially reduce the DRAM dependency by a gain of speed, power and efficiency and a simplified system architecture. So that being said, let me just give uh, some elements about the status of the STT MRAM development in uh, microelectronics industry. So um, in the recent years, uh, STT MRAM moved in volume production um, with announcements coming either from the alliance between Everspin and Global Foundries with memories that evolved up to the gigabit range uh, or uh, solutions proposed by Samsung in the 28 uh, and uh, below uh, embedded MRAM uh, memory. Um, there is also an increasing number of industrial active in the MRAM arena, and these actors uh, are coming uh, from different parts, either tool suppliers, foundries, or big IDMs. And we can see inside uh, big names uh, like uh, TSMC, Samsung, Global Foundries, uh, Intel, um, and uh, Everspin, which are very active uh, in the field together with uh, the tool uh, suppliers. Now, in terms of application, so the STTM RAM first application uh, targeted is embedded flush uh, replacement. So, in terms of advantages uh, over the flush, uh, the fabrication of STT MRAM requires three levels of masks instead of 15 to 20 masks for embedded flush, having much better endurance, larger than 10 to the 12 cycles, much faster write, uh, 49 seconds versus 100 milliseconds, and much reduced uh, energy, uh, 400x uh, reduction. So, um, Embedded non-volatile memory is a must for microcontrollers products with market segments going from uh, automotive, more than half smart cards and consumer applications. And the uh, industrial actors are very active in this field uh, with uh, recent announcements in the last IEDM uh, conferences. A second uh, application which is targeted by the MRAM is uh, the last level cache, so uh, namely in the mobile and high-end processors. So last level uh, cache mainly use uh, actually SRAM, although some processors also use um, uh, embedded uh, DRAM. So uh, thanks to its endurance, low latency, STT and RAM can replace uh, SRAM or embedded DRAM as uh, last level cache in mobile application processors and high-end uh, CPU. So being much smaller in cell size than the SRAM, uh, plus its uh, non-volatility uh, brings uh, the MRAM as a potential replacement for the SRAM. However, the STT MRAM still has some uh, endurance limitations uh, for these applications and further developments uh, have to be proposed either with uh, improved uh, STT MRAM architectures or uh, new architectures uh, that I will describe in the next part of my talk. So I'm going now uh, to the new memory concepts uh, beyond STT MRAM. So writing an MTG, magnetic tunnel junction, has uh, many possibilities. So of course I will not enter in all the details here as uh, we have a lot of experts present around this conference. So, of course, the uh, MRAM evolved uh, from the field-driven uh, MRAM, like the Toggle uh, MRAM, which was commercialized since uh, 2006 with different sizes, 
but this memory is not uh, scalable, having a large power consumption due to the field writing. Uh, next iteration was the spin transfer torque initially in planar configuration and after in perpendicular. And this is commercialized since uh, 2012 and in production uh, now at uh, all major microelectronics uh, foundries. The next uh, step was the spin orbit torque, either spin all or rush band, uh, with uh, activities which are still under uh, research and development and with uh, uh, targets for fast and very endurant uh, memory application. And a future iteration is the voltage control of uh, anisotropy, so use of a voltage instead of a current in order to control the magnetization orientation. So this is at an early stage R&D for fast, ultra low power, dense memory application. Uh, there are of course, um, new concepts like race track and skirmions, uh, displacements of uh, domain walls, uh, as well as use all, all optical switching for a very fast control of the uh, uh, switching of the magnetization. So all these concepts are uh, detailed uh, in a review paper, Opportunities and Challenges for Spintronics in a Microelectronics Industry, which was published last year. Uh, in uh, Nature Electronics uh, by the Spintronic uh, uh, Factory uh, Network. So uh, let me go back now to the STT actual challenges. And the first one is the thermal stability at uh, sub uh, 20 nanometer uh, nodes. So um, this is a graph uh, showing the dependence of the uh, delta factor. Uh, which is the stability factor as a function of the junction diameter uh, from this reference. And we can see that below 10, 20 to 30 nanometer, there is a, an important decrease of this uh, delta factor, uh, which uh, is not providing uh, enough uh, memory retention for uh, small uh, technological nodes. So uh, how uh, to solve these issues? In conventional perpendicular STT MRAM, the perpendicular anisotropy is provided by the MGO iron cobalt boron interface, and this is partially balanced by the easy in plane uh, shape anisotropy, which means that going to smaller diameters uh, means uh, we uh, end up with lower anisotropy. So, in order to solve this issue of the conventional perpendicular STTM run, both SpinTech and Tohoku University proposed a new concept of uh, uh, STT. MRAM memory, which is the perpendicular shape anisotropy. So instead of relying on the interfacial anisotropy um, in uh, this uh, tri-layer, we propose a structure which uh, is uh, thicker. We take advantage of the bulk uh, and shape anisotropy of a 3D structure. Uh, and uh, this has advantages both in terms of scalability and in thermal uh, stability um, uh, with, with the temperature, as I will describe in the next slides. So uh, first of all, uh, I'm showing here a diagram uh, of uh, the dependence uh, as a function of um, uh, thickness and diameter of the uh, delta uh, calculated uh, either by macro spin uh, or uh, by macromagnetic simulations. So uh, we can see that by reducing uh, the diameter uh, down to a uh, few nanometer, with a conventional uh, perpendicular STT MRAM, we have uh, an important decrease of this uh, uh, delta factor, and we are not able to maintain uh, anymore a delta factor over 64 uh, diameters, which are 15 nanometer. Uh, so instead uh, of um, using this interfacial anisotropy, we propose this 3D uh, configuration, which shows that we can increase a lot the delta factor, and we are able to maintain a delta of uh, 60 uh, for a diameter, which is uh, as low as four nanometer. So this perpendicular shape anisotropy, MTG, allow uh, several um, advantages like a tunable thermal stability factor just by playing with the dimensions of the cell, either thickness and uh, the diameter, a more robust uh, so source of anisotropy like the bulk anisotropy, 
has a weaker thermal variation of uh, tunnel magnetic resistance and anisotropy thanks to the much thicker storage layer. Use of flower damping material is possible and uh, reduced spin pumping effect. And uh, as I mentioned, we can achieve extreme scalability of delta 60 down to four nanometer nanometer. Now, uh, the issue in terms of uh, technological integration is that the process to fabricate is more challenging to, uh, to do. I will not uh, enter into detail here, but we have solutions uh, proposed uh, recently, uh, either in using some uh, vias or damascene or pre-pattern uh, subsets that um, overcome the issue of etching thick materials uh, for this uh, concept. A second uh, aspect uh, for this perpendicular shape anisotropy is the dependence uh, of the uh, coercivity and of the tunnel magnetic resistance, as well as of the um, stability factor with the temperature, which is one of the uh, weaker point of the interfacial based anisotropy system. So in a reference uh, published recently by our group, we have shown that the thermal fluctuations of the perpendicular uh, magnetic anisotropy um, at uh, uh, the iron cobalt boron MGO system are reduced by uh, exchange uh, stiffening coming from metallic layer with large uh, Curie temperatures, especially cobalt. And uh, we also have a weaker thermal variation of the tunnel magnetic resistance and anisotropy thanks to a much uh, thicker storage layer. So uh, if we compare the conventional MRAM in uh, black uh, here in the two graphs with respect to a perpendicular shape anisotropy of uh, two different thicknesses or of different materials, we can see that uh, either the reduction of the tunnel magnetic resistance of the coercivity or of the thermal stability factor are much reduced with respect to the conventional STTM RAM, which is based on the interfacial uh, anisotropy. Coming back now to other remaining challenges of the uh, spin transfer talk in order to um, propose uh, uh, valid solutions for this uh, embedded uh, field. So uh, in terms of write, write and read efficiency, in order to reduce uh, the current density needed from writing toward one mega per centimeter square, uh, or uh, 50 micrams from the transistors at pulse duration, which are 50 nanoseconds. Reliability and breakdown, important, and also increase the TMR above the 250%, uh, which is equivalent to the reduction of the peripherals. So uh, all this uh, goes through the stack uh, engineering and material optimization, and several solutions are proposed namely the use of a double MTG uh, STTM RAM, uh, which uh, allows uh, either to uh, increase the thermal stability by doubling the number of interfaces, uh, uh, but also to reduce uh, the current uh, for uh, writing. So this is something that is uh, developed um, in different groups uh, among uh, these groups, uh, SpinTech is uh, very active. Another challenge is in terms of write speed, and there is a trade-off uh, in between uh, speed uh, and endurance uh, to be um, uh, ensured. Actually, uh, there are some uh, issues like the read disturb, the incubation time, and the fact uh, that the uh, writing voltage is inversely proportional to the writing time and also uh, can approach the breakdown voltage. So, uh, there is a fundamental limitation in the STTM RAM in terms of uh, cyclability versus the writing voltage that actually can be solved by other solutions uh, that I will describe in the forthcoming slides. So now the question is how fast is fast enough in order to be um, uh, to, to make a point in the in the field of uh, cache uh, solutions registers and processors. So I'm showing in a different representation the density versus speed. 
for the memory hierarchy. So again, high density to the left, storage disk drive, high speed to the right, processors, registers, and cache. Now, in terms of uh, actual uh, speeds uh, and densities, uh, we can see that, uh, meaning that we are able to propose a very dense uh, perpendicular STT MRAM solution. So this could be potentially a good replacement for the DRAM. Uh, unfortunately, for uh, higher um, uh, speed uh, solutions, we need a sub-nanosecond switching MRAM, which uh, STT MRAM do not uh, 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 realize so far. So other solutions have to pro be proposed for a sub-nanosecond switching MRAM. And the different solutions proposed uh, in the literature were either a precessional uh, STTM RAM using a perpendicular polarizer that uh, can um, uh, increase the speed of the switching use of an EasyCon, uh, which, um, have, which has a positive impact in reduction of uh, the incubation time, but uh, also uh, new solutions like a three-terminal device like a spin orbitalk or all optical switching um, uh, of the uh, magnetization that I will describe in the next slides. So first of all, uh, the spin orbit talk. Uh, there are several presentations uh, in this um, workshop, so I will not uh, enter uh, into detail, just uh, saying that in order to uh, have uh, this uh, three terminal device uh, system, we need uh, charge to spin conversion materials, non-magnetic materials with large spin orbit coupling, which creates spin uh, current perpendicular to charge current, either by spin hole effect or uh, rush bar uh, effect. The advantage of this is that we are decoupling read and write, which can bring us to the potentially unlimited endurance and negligible uh, read uh, disturb. So uh, we have a limited incubation time by playing with the spin current geometry and we can obtain a reliable sub-nanosecond uh, write. Uh, uh, extensive review of uh, this SOT, among others, is uh, this paper by um, Aurélien Monchamp and the authors. Now, uh, with these properties of the SOT, we can say that SOT can tackle the SRAM replacement with switching, which are down to 200 picoseconds. There are some um, references in the literature going even uh, farther down to three picoseconds. Uh, but uh, with the complexity that it requires an in-plane field for a deterministic switching. So there are some solutions that are proposed for um, um, to solve this deterministic uh, uh, switching. So uh, there are results obtained uh, in terms of demonstrators uh, on the spin orbit talk MRAM coming either from uh, IMEC uh, showing reliable sub nanosecond switching and sub volt uh, operation, uh, hybrid SOT and STT configuration with the perpendicular uh, magnetic anisotropy uh, technology. Uh, and also a first integration of SOT MRAM with uh, CMOS with an in-plane uh, technology coming from uh, Tohoku University. So uh, this um, technology is making uh, nice progress, but it's still um, uh, not mature enough in order to uh, be uh, uh, commercialized uh, so far. The industry progressively moved toward the SOT uh, with an increasing uh, number of um, actors and startups, it is still at the R&D uh, phase and need to improve uh, write efficiency uh, and uh, density, namely due to this uh, three uh, terminal uh, configuration. I will uh, speak um, uh, in uh, one or two slides about the all optical switching MRAM. Uh, this is a project uh, in which uh, Spintech participated with uh, other colleagues um, uh, from uh, Denmark, uh, uh, Netherlands. Um, and the idea was to combine a Spintronic uh, chip 
uh, with uh, the magnetic tunnel junction with the photonic chip, which is provided by I IMEC, and to uh, take advantage of this uh, sub nanosecond uh, writing by changing optically the magnetization direction of the free layer of a magnetic tunnel junction. And of course, use a transparent electrode in order to be able to uh, bring the laser at the level of the magnetic tunnel junction uh, and optically switchable material. So integrate in a magnetic tunnel junction, transparent electrodes and the materials that are switched uh, with the laser. So for that, um, uh, solutions uh, down uh, to nanoseconds and uh, below uh, can be uh, proposed. So a uh, few results that are uh, described in this uh, uh, recent uh, papers uh, from the team uh, indicating that we have been able to uh, tune uh, finally uh, the thicknesses of the terbium and the cobalt in a multilayer that can be optically switched uh, helicity independent uh, in cobalt-rich regions, both with wet femtoseconds and uh, picosecond long pulses. Uh, and uh, we have been able to uh, switch uh, reproducibly uh, in a demonstrator, uh, the magnetization at this uh, pulse width. Of course, uh, this is something interesting for the future. Um, uh, unfortunately, this helicity independent is a, a toggle switching, which means that uh, we have to read before write so this is something that uh, still has to be um, uh, tackled in order to propose uh, uh, technological integrated solutions. So I'm just uh, summarizing all this part, saying that uh, for future MRAM applications, there are a lot of flavors going from the conventional perpendicular STT uh, MRAM um, up to some configurations in which we can combine STT uh, with heat. Uh, up to this perpendicular shape of anisotropy uh, with uh, the thicker layer um, in the storage layer. The SOT uh, can have advantages in terms of speed for cache, CPU, uh, server, and HPC uh, applications, and uh, also uh, all optical switching in the future, but uh, with further developments can uh, possibly be a solution. I'm, I will not uh, discuss here uh, new concepts that are also uh, addressed in the lab, uh, taking advantage of the voltage control plus the spin to charge current conversion, which uh, can have uh, big advantages for the spin logic uh, part. Um, I'm also putting here a logo uh, of a project in which we participate uh, about um, uh, the Echo Spintronics in which we are looking to replace uh, materials that are scarce or uh, critical. Uh, and that is also an interesting field of uh, research in the forthcoming years. Now, uh, let me uh, just uh, conclude for uh, some perspectives for Internet of Things and computing. So of course, working on uh, solutions for the uh, memory uh, is important. We have to, 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 to bring um, a standalone solution but also uh, the bigger advantage of the Spintronics can come in integrated system, both for Internet of Things and computing. So first of all, an example of application beyond the memory is that with the same uh, magnetic stack, which is the uh, magnetic tunnel junction uh, used for the STTM RAM, we have been able to propose three different uh, functionalities and uh, we can choose the function at the design stage, either an RF uh, spintronic function or a magnetic uh, field uh, sensor. So uh, this has been done in the framework of a European project called GREAT uh, in a heterogeneous integration in a single chip, uh, allowing smaller area enhanced functionality uh, and remote autonomous sensor uh, IoT uh, application. So uh, integrating uh, these functions and bringing the non-volatility uh, at the level of uh, microcontrollers, but also in the sensing or the RF part, has important advantages versus uh, conventional systems uh, in which um, the energy consumption is much larger because uh, we have to consume uh, either in uh, 
functioning, but also in standby mode. Using Spintronics, uh, both for microcontrollers uh, in low power microcontrollers based on uh, MRAM, but also using uh, technology with magnetic sensors and uh, wake up receiver uh, functions, we uh, can reduce the power consumption uh, by a factor of 10 and we demonstrated that in a system of uh, on chip uh, integrated. Now beyond uh, memory applications are the new computing paradigm and conventional computing due to the slow bandwidth between the logic uh, and the memory uh, the logic is much faster than the data transfer, so uh, we have a high power consumption with the data transfer. So we have uh, what we call this uh, von Neumann conventional architecture bottleneck, in which uh, the reduction uh, of the power consumption is ensured by, uh, as I mentioned, uh, proposing solution for the memory hierarchy, which are low power, but this is not uh, sufficient. So we have to really change the paradigm and to go into the field of the in-memory computing. So in-memory computing uh, to perform logic operation inside the memory with the benef benefit of MRAM with an increased uh, cache density, a parallel a local data processing, low energy programmable. So this means uh, that uh, we can propose uh, solutions for a better memory uh, storage bio-inspired computing with these uh, neuromorphic architectures, but also the in-memory computing. And the combination of all this has advantages for big data, cognitive and internet of things, and for which Spintronics definitely uh, has a role to play in the next uh, years. Instead of conclusion, I will just uh, uh, say that the Spintronics uh, has a broadening spectrum of interest, which uh, moves from the MRAM uh, standalone embedded with the different flavors to non-volatile logic, artificial intelligence, but there are definitely much more uh, fields of application like the race trucks in cybersecurity, terahertz application, RF devices, energy sensors, and uh, there was uh, a big uh, uh, and long distance uh, that uh, we achieved from the magnetic recording. And uh, all this makes uh, our field of research uh, very interesting with, uh, with a lot of uh, potential in the forthcoming years. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, and I'm open for uh, discussion and question from you. Thank you very much again.